encourage your friend to despise stout-heartedly those who upbraid him because he has sought the shade of retirement and has abdicated his career of honors and though he might have attained more has preferred tranquillity to them all let him prove daily to these detractors how wisely he has looked out for his own interests those whom men envy will continue to march past him some will be pushed out of the ranks and others will fall prosperity is a turbulent thing it torments itself it stirs the brain in more ways than one goading men on to various aims some to power and others to high living some it puffs up others it slackens and wholly enervates but the retort comes so and so carries his prosperity well yes just as he carries his liquor so you need not let this class of men persuade you that one who is besieged by the crowd is happy they run to him as crowds rush for a pool of water rendering it muddy while they drain it but you say men call our friend a trifler and a sluggard there are men you know whose speech is awry who use the contrary terms they called him happy what of it was he happy even the fact that to certain persons he seems a man of very rough and gloomy cast of mind does not trouble me aristo used to say that he preferred a youth of stern disposition to one who was a jolly fellow and agreeable to the crowd for he added wine which when new seemed harsh and sour becomes good wine but that which tasted well at the vintage cannot stand age so let them call him stern and a foe to his own advancement it is just this sternness that will go well when it is aged provided only that he continues to cherish virtue and to absorb thoroughly the studies which make for culture not those with which it is sufficient for a man to sprinkle himself but those in which the mind should be steeped now is the time to learn what is there any time when a man should not learn by no means but just as it is creditable for every age to study so it is not creditable for every age to be instructed an old man learning his a b c is a disgraceful and absurd object the young man must store up the old man must use you will therefore be doing a thing most helpful to yourself if you make this friend of yours as good a man as possible those kindnesses they tell us are to be both sought for and bestowed which benefit the giver no less than the receiver and they are unquestionably the best kind finally he has no longer any freedom in the matter he has pledged his word and it is less disgraceful to compound with a creditor than to compound with a promising future to pay his debt of money the business man must have a prosperous voyage the farmer must have fruitful fields and kindly weather but the debt which your friend owes can be completely paid by mere good will fortune has no jurisdiction over character let him so regulate his character that in perfect peace he may bring to perfection that spirit within him which feels neither loss nor gain but remains in the same attitude no matter how things fall out a spirit like this if it is heaped with worldly goods rises superior to its wealth if on the other hand chance has stripped him of a part of his wealth or even all it is not impaired if your friend had been born in parthia he would have begun when a child to bend the bow if in germany he would forthwith have been brandishing his slender spear if he had been born in the days of our forefathers he would have learned to ride a horse and smite his enemy hand to hand these are the occupations which the system of each race recommends to the individual yes uh, prescribes for him to what then shall this friend of yours devote his attention i say let him learn that which is helpful against all weapons against every kind of foe contempt of death because no one doubts that death has in it something that inspires terror so that it shocks even our souls which nature has so molded that they love their own existence 
for otherwise there would be no need to prepare ourselves and to whet our courage to face that toward which we should move with a sort of voluntary instinct precisely as all men tend to preserve their existence no man learns a thing in order that if necessity arises he may lie down with composure upon a bed of roses but he steals his courage to this end that he may not surrender his plighted faith to torture and that if need be he may some day stay out his watch in the trenches even though wounded without even leaning on his spear because sleep is likely to creep over men who support themselves by any prop whatsoever in death there is nothing harmful for there must exist something to which it is harmful and yet if you are possessed by so great a craving for a longer life reflect that none of the objects which vanish from our gaze and are reabsorbed into the world of things from which they have come forth and are soon to come forth again is annihilated they merely end their course and do not perish and death which we fear and shrink from merely interrupts life but does not steal it away the time will return when we shall be restored to the light of day and many men would object to this were they not brought back in forgetfulness of the past but i mean to show you later with more care that everything which seems to perish merely changes since you are destined to return you ought to depart with a tranquil mind mark how the round of the universe repeats its course you will see that no star in our firmament is extinguished but that they all set and rise in alternation summer has gone but another year will bring it again winter lies low but will be restored by its own proper months night has overwhelmed the sun but day will soon rout the night again the wandering stars retrace their former courses a part of the sky is rising unceasingly and a part is sinking one word more and then i shall stop infants and boys and those who have gone mad have no fear of death and it is most shameful if reason cannot afford us that peace of mind to which they have been brought by their folly farewell end of letter thirty six Recording by John Van Stan, Savannah, Georgia. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain.